it's not hard to see that our patterns of behavior are playing out on our planet. And it's affecting people. It's affecting people's well-being. It's affecting people's mental health. Um, Johan Hari, he says, what if depression is in fact a form of grief for our own lives not being as they should? What if it is a form of grief for the connections we have lost yet still need? I think more people are on antidepressants than ever in history. And maybe that is partly because we're so disconnected from nature. We're so disconnected from natural harmonies and ways of living. And I come to these pictures, how beautiful <laughs> and how playful that everything is interconnected like this. It warms my soul. It speaks of a language that is not spoken. I don't need to say any words for this to make, mean something to people. Our lungs are the, lung, the lungs of the earth are the same patterns as our own lungs. And if you zoom out again, we have the same pat patterns and fractals. And I've shown this to people of all ages, all languages, um, not all languages, but many languages. Um, and, it, and it speaks to them because it speaks to our heart, maybe, and not our head. And my favorite pattern, spirals, I shouldn't have a favorite, but I do. Um, and it's spirals because they speak to me of time and interconnectedness in such a beautiful way, but a spiraling um, fossil under the microscope and a galaxy, how beautiful, we are so interrelated and pattern can be a way, one way for us to get to that place. And I think patterns can help us break, um, break patterns. So when patterns are broken, new worlds emerge, Thule Kufelberg. I think we are at a time when new worlds are emerging and it's exciting. I'm now going to share a bit more of a personal story because that's paternity and yes that's that's interesting and I, that's my kind of life's purpose really to share this story um, but about two years ago I realized I was talking about this I was very busy I was doing a lot I was talking about nature connection I was talking about things like this but actually on the inside my life looked more like this um, so this is, this is actually on solstice and on World Happiness Day and I had meeting, 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 doing a talk and then going home probably very late at night. I had 2,000, um, 29,000 unread emails. We'd taken on new staff, we were growing the business, I didn't have any time for myself and actually um, I was feeling more like this than any natural system. I was treating myself like a cog in a machine, just endlessly doing, endlessly creating. And on the surface, I might have looked like this on the left in New Magazine, but on the inside, this is actually how I felt. Um, and this was me taking myself away, um, feeling very, very burnt out, very unhappy and very uncreatively fulfilled. And I took myself away to actually think this was a place in Guatemala. I went on a silent retreat for a month um, just to kind of recalibrate myself. Um, and I started to ponder how we think about growth in the West. Um, and this, I think, uh, sums it up quite beautifully and how at odds it is to the natural world. We look at growth like this infinite line, kind of fi infinite growth on a finite planet. doesn't seem to make sense. Um, and we're not living in this kind of emergent natural way. And I think we can go to nature to learn a lot more about how we can live much more, live and create much more sustainably. Love this Albert Einstein quote. Look deep into nature and then you'll come to understand everything better something so beautiful about that. Um, and I took some time and I started to think about cycles, the cycles of life and how they are in everything, this rhythm of expansion and contraction, whether it's in the pattern of a day, our lungs, the cycles of birds around the earth, the moon, the tides, our patterns of sleep, the patterns of life, the patterns of the movement of the planets. And again, back to creativity, the patterns of a project. That was actually a book that I wrote. And I, did the f I, I finished this book and went straight on to the next project. I didn't give myself any downtime. And I felt really down, actually, when the book came out. I felt a bit strange. I hadn't given myself space. And we don't give ourselves enough space in our Western culture. And I realized, looking into it more, I was a yang, yangy person. I heard this kind of term of yin and yang. Um, but I was a yangy person. And this, this kind of sums it up quite well. When you are over yang, you can cause stress on your body and whole mental emotional self because you're only using half your creative cycle, namely the doing without the being. And we're very much a culture that prides ourselves on busyness, on doing, constant doing, doing, doing. That's much, much better than ever resting. What's, what, what good is that doing anyone if we're resting? This was my screensaver for years and I never really thought about it that much. <laughs> but I started to investigate more around um, yin and yang. And I started to learn a lot about nature, even more. It was kind of, I talked about nature and patterns and the visual side of nature. 
But what about these energies that are actually in everything in life? They say this expansion, this contraction. And I started doing some research, it's actually thanks to fengshui.com, I got this image. Um, but en the energy of, um, of, ye of yang is here in the white, the color of white. Um, and it's about doing, it's about expansion, it's about rising energy, um, it's, about, it's about day, it's about lightness, um, it's, about, it's about the masculine actually, it's the masculine energy. And then we have yin, which is the dark, we go back into nighttime, the feminine, the restful, the contracted. And we really start to kind of see these energies play out. There's a few more here. So, so um, yang is left brain dominant. It's expression, it's shaping, it's agency, it's asserting ourselves, it's manifesting, it's the material, it's purposeful, functional, goal-oriented goal and realizing your ideas. Whereas yin is this much more kind of reflective space. It's right, right brain dominant. It's about co-creation. It's about relationship. It's about restraint. It's about your feelings. It's about really listening. It's about allowing wholeness, being, connectedness, and the ineffable. And I trained at this time with an amazing place called the Red School. And um, Alexandra, my mentor, is here. And I feel so happy to have her here. Um, but she says, yang reigns supreme in our Western culture. And it seems we don't have the intuition, the inner discipline, or time for the yin. It's not an option to avoid one at the expense of the other. We're a culture running on yang, and that needs to change because it's burning our, frazzling our creative brains. Um, we don't have this, we're burning out. Many people are experiencing this. And we're doing exactly the same to the planet. We're seeing it like this endless resource that we can continually take, and it's not sustainable. And we can start to look at the seasons. This is something I learned, the cosmology that I learned at the Red School. Beautiful way of training about women, um, learning from female cycles that really have so much to tell our whole world about how we could live more in tune with nature. So we can look to the seasons. In any creative project, we have this as well. So it's worth mentioning any, any creative endeavor we do has this cycle, it has this process, it has this spiraling of energy. And we start with spring at the beginning of a project. It's about tenderness innocence, curiosity, playfulness. You might see how this plays out even in a conversation. That's a creative cycle. Everything we do, there's cycles within cycles. We have summer. That's about driving it forward. It's celebrating. It's high energy and it's enjoyment. We all know we've got that feeling of summer, but we live in a culture that wants summer all the time, often. Winter, uh, autumn is about discernment. It's about presence, insight, creating space and slowing down. It's in the messiness. It's the mulchiness. It's the kind of nutrients going back into the earth to re-nourish the system. And we have stillness, we have winter, where we withdraw, we reflect, we renew, we rest, and we vision new ideas. In nature, we don't see summer kind of constantly blooming all the time. There's time of real rest and reflection, and we need that, and we need that in our own lives. And so I come back to this, this cycles, these beauty. So this is the how-to session. So I thought I'd try and take a lot of these kind of bigger ideas and actually make something a bit more practical as how can we start to bring a bit more yin energy into a very yangy culture. And these are very simple. There's only five, um, but they're about little patterns of our day where we can start to think about this energy of yin and yang um, in everything that we do. So number one, it might be taking time in the morning for reflection. Um, and it might be about creating space and time for moments of daily self-care as you move from yin, that's your sleep time, into an active day of yang energy. We're doing, we're getting stuff done, that's our yang. So actually honoring that transition and that cycle in every day. It might be about doing a check-in. It might be about some meditation or just some pondering and looking at the view. It might be about not having social media straight away in the morning. You find your cortisol levels kind of explode when you do that. You're going from yin to, to yang. So going softly, tuning in softly. Um, might be about gentle music. I actually spoke with Sunday Time Style um, about a month ago of, for a piece they were doing around, the, around deceleration. And I talked about sometimes not very good for the environment, so I feel bad about that. But now and again, I'll have a bath um, before a, a day of work. And they, they were like, that's so radical. That's so, so <laughs> bizarre having a bath before work. But sometimes just giving yourself that space for rest and reflection can be really positive and allow new thoughts and creativity to come through. Number two, feeling first. So honoring your inner being, your yin, before going into your to-do list, your agendas, your yang, and a way to really foster connection, authenticity, and support. So as a team at Paternity, we actually always say, how's everyone, when we have a meeting, rather than going straight into all our to-do lists and things we need to get done, which we all have every day, we just say, how's everyone feeling? How's everyone doing today? How are we arriving? How do we feel in our body? How do we feel? Um, honoring our feelings before our thinking brain's doing. 
Um, yeah, so checking in with others. And it really creates a real support. You might find that one person is actually feeling really terrible, but one person feels wonderful. And that can really help you to um, have an, almost like an ecological system, a natural system of how you're working, honouring where everyone's at. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI TV.